Um, hello everyone, um, my name is Martin Gerzin, I came to you uh, from Poland, uh, and I would like to talk to you today about the new form of democracy which is actually spreading really fast across the world. Just today I looked through the news and there is a next citizens assembly in the city of London in the, the borough of Camden, and the citizens assembly of Toronto is going to have a look at the climate change. So this new form of democracy, which actually means a group of randomly citizens uh, who, uh, who are gathered according to the certain demographic criteria. Those that we use in Poland are uh, age, gender, education, and on the city level, we try to include all the district. What is the reason for it? So the cities, uh, especially uh, the capitals and so on, are so huge. But it's not, it's not possible to invite everyone to take part in a discussion uh, with regards to the uh, certain matter of, of, of a city. So uh, the aim is of creating the citizens assembly is to have a city or a country in a small scale, like in a, in a manager. That the, the scientific term for it is the mini public, I'm, I'm not a great fan of it, but it gives you an idea what we are trying to do. We are trying to create <coughs> the whole community on a small scale. Why? Because when the scale is small, uh, you can invite experts, you can provide the, the learning phase, and you, you can provide the opportunity for people to discuss this matter over the long period of time. So citizens' assemblies, uh, in general, are called the long-term deliberation, and it really can take many, many months. So. Um, for me personally, the, um, the inspiration to, to start it uh, in, uh, in the north, or, north of Poland was, like our, was the experiences from Australia. So I learned uh, about the methodology, how they do it uh, through the reports of the New Democracy Foundation. And uh, but definitely one of the best examples, which is currently most known, I think, is the one from Ireland. Uh, they had several topics. Uh, with one citizen assembly, but the one which is most famous is uh, the abortion. And it led to actually changing the constitutions through the referendum. However, uh, so, uh, so the results were implemented. It's also one, one of the uh, factors for, for the success. So but, uh, they started with uh, long discussions, many presentations, and uh, the, the citizens assembly provided the recommendations which then were fed to the referendum, to the national uh, referendum. For us, in Gdansk, the, the, the inspiration to do it uh, at first was a flood. So uh, the city was uh, destroyed by the very severe rain, and uh, the, the general thing in the city was that the, the city hall uh, didn't prepare as good as they were claiming they did. So. I spoke uh, I, uh, uh, with a friend of mine who had decided to contact the mayor, and even uh, both the mayor who knew uh, uh, who I was, I wrote an official email, so we were not friends uh, at the time, so I wrote a regular email asking the mayor, perhaps we could meet, and, this, and I would like to present to you this, this concept of the citizens' assembly, and it could be useful for you to do it on the, uh, on the topic of how to better prepare the city of Gdańsk for the torrential rains in the context actually of, of climate change because the, 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 the rainfall was so high that the uh, city service was not prepared for, they didn't expect it. So they thought that this could happen once for 100 years and obviously it happened uh, more often. So um, you can see on those photos from Gdańsk that uh, we have uh, more than 51, around 51 or 52 percent of uh, people, adult people in Gdańsk are women, and we also included in the in, in the composition of the citizens' assembly. So, and uh, there is also uh, this. Um, uh, we, we try to have a, to, to be so specific, even that in the age categories, we also check for uh, which gender is is higher or lower in each uh, uh, category. So for example, in the category of 65 years plus, is there uh, more men or more women? Okay. Definitely, women live longer, and we also try to, to include it uh, in, our, uh, in the composition of the citizen assembly. And definitely, uh, yes, it is 
every time is dominated by women. So because that's the composition of the of the city of Gdansk and Poland as well. If we were to have a if we were to have a citizen assembly on the national level, it will be dominated by women as well. So um, why why bother? Why bother at all? So the whole point of organizing uh, the citizen assembly is to have a democracy which provides the best possible solution. My, my personal uh, inspiration was to find a method which will provide high quality decisions. And the, the common good of the city or of the country is at the very heart of this whole process. So uh, when we would start, if, 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 let's imagine this is the citizen assembly, okay? The size could be about, right? Or I like the bigger groups, about 50 or more. But nevertheless, uh, the facilitator will start a uh, meeting like this. But we have gathered here to discuss this topic for the common good of the city, of the citizens. And uh, please consider what are the best possible solutions for you personally, for your family, for children, and for, other, for the whole community as well. And the, what is unique about Gdańsk and about Poland as well, because there was another citizen assembly in the city of Lublin, is that when the recommendations reach the level of support of 80%, the mayor or the city council declares that they are binding for him or for her. So uh, this is not a consulta public consultation exercise. This is something for real. And this, uh, just this decision it changes a lot because everyone who takes part in it, whether are the participants uh, or the experts or the stakeholders, they all know that they report, that their recommendations they do matter because they will be implemented. How do we know it? Because we invite the mayor at the very beginning of the process to come in person and to tell the whole group whatever comes out of this uh, meeting, I will implement. And uh, this changes uh, also the attitude of people because sometimes when you organize uh, regular public meetings. There is a lot of shouting. People are screaming, and yes, they they, uh, they would like they would like to push the mayor to do something they they, they wish, and this this is completely completely non-existent. It's absent uh, during the citizen assemblies. Why? Because there is no incentive. You don't need to shout at the mayor. The participants are the decision makers. The the mayor comes and he say, and, and he says, "I will do it. I will implement it," and that's it. So it's up to the participants to come out with the uh, recommendations and to really focus on, um, okay, well, these are the, the, the proposals from the experts, which one of those is best, let's discuss them in small groups, let's discuss them in the, during the plenary uh, time. And, uh, and it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of time to come up with uh, uh, good decisions uh, because the citizens who come they don't need to be experts on uh, you know, flood prevention, on climate change, on improving air quality. We need to learn about this thing. So this, this, this initial phase is crucial. So you create something like the educational program for, for school children, something like this. But uh, when experts come, they, they don't only give presentations. Uh, you, can, you can ask them questions, and any time you can send them also <coughs> something in writing. Um, so the, the amount of uh, uh, educational materials is really, really huge because we try to make it as a um, The thinking is like this. What is necessary for this group to make a fully, like a reasonable, informed decision? How much information shall we provide? And this is done for the, for the learning uh, phase. So, um, <coughs> It is not just the experience from Poland, also from other countries, uh, that uh, the, the quality of decisions which are made <coughs> is really high. How does it happen? First of all, you have this group of people who is selected, selected by law. It means that they don't need to think about the next elections. Uh, how should I run my campaign? What should I say? What my party leader will say? Will I be on the on the nice uh, place on the list? Because in Poland we have the, uh, the public representation electoral system with list of uh, of candidates, and it's and if you're number one, then you have higher chances of winning. 
but this issue is non-existent in the citizen assembly. People just come to fo and they can focus on the issue, and that's it. And so, uh, and they can be independent in the, their thinking, and they are an encouraged <laughs> to be. So. And uh, since you have those old age groups, gender, and so on, you have really diverse groups. We try to, uh, that's one of the reasons why, why I like big groups, 50 people or more, because it gives you a diversity of opinions uh, in the rooms. And certainly as well, when uh, there is the, the time for the experts, they also pre uh, present the whole spectrum. Us as wide spectrum of possible solutions are possible, as possible. So, uh, and due to the, this learning phase, which is usually absent during the referendum, the quality of decisions goes up immediately. Because uh, in, uh, when, when in Poland uh, referenda are organized, you can just go to the um, voting uh, place and just pick something and that's it, and throw the, throw the, throw the uh, ballot uh, into, the, into the box. And it's over. So there was no discussion, no education, nothing. nothing. So the, the quality is very, very, very low. So, and it's completely different when you organize the citizen assembly because it follows the like, psychological principles. Uh, and the basic one is like this. What do you need to make a fully informed decision? Yeah? And that's, that's uh, definitely the education. And also deliberation, this, this part when people discuss the issue in small groups, it also helps uh, to, 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 to it enables you to better digest the issue. So you know it, you know it better. So um, you know, when uh, let's say the topic is the air quality, how to improve the air quality in Budapest. So uh, when you are an NGO, you don't need to campaign all over the city with your message. You just come in person and you present. The, your, your, uh, propo you propose the solution to the whole group. And we, when you're a company and you're a stakeholder, you also come in person and you present your position to the whole, whole group. So the time is equal for everyone. And the order is selected by law. So this, mean, this is meant by all stakeholders are invited on equal grounds. Uh, in comparison, there was recently a referendum in Poland in the city of Lublin and there was like this tiny group of activists saying, we need to save this green space. And there was this huge developer who had millions, literally millions, they printed billboards all over the city, campaigning for the same, uh, for the same referendum. So the, the, the ground was not equal at all. So the developer had money, activists didn't have money. If it was a citizens' uh, assembly, they would come on the same ground. Six minutes or eight minutes, Activist presentation, developer just presentations, and this is fair. And they all have access, which is also very, very important. So, uh, as I mentioned at, at the beginning, um, it is encouraged uh, to think about the common good. Oh, definitely from your per personal perspective as well. But um, I remember as someone like an older person standing up in the city of Gdansk when we were discussing the air quality, and he said, let's do it for, for our grandchildren. They need to have, live in a good environment. So let's uh, make our recommendations like really strong. And the result was that the, uh, the majority of about 80% of uh, members of the citizen assembly, they said within five years, <coughs> burning coal in city should be banned completely. No more coal. Because they understood how, how, uh, how huge is the impact on health? Not just the climate, because from climate perspective, it's also important, but um, there are health issues as well involved. So, and since uh, the whole process is um, run by skilled facilitators, uh, and there are uh, like those ground rules created at the beginning that people uh, treat each other with respect, they listen to each other, you have very good conditions for deliberations for those discussions. Okay, so how this whole process works? So we start with the first uh, random selections. Uh, from the, in Poland, we use the voters <coughs> register as a base. And we select at random, uh, let's say around 10,000 letters, and they are sent uh, to, the, uh, to the people 
uh, by name. So the, the, it's not per household, it's by, by particular name. And uh, the letter have a, the letter uh, is, is signed by the mayor, you have all the information, what is the topic, and, and there is also, um, uh, it, the information is included, but it is paid, because each participant in Poland receives around 150 euro for participation in the whole thing. Uh, the reason is that um, since it uh, takes many Saturdays, uh, some people could work at this time, so it's like a compensation for that time. Someone may have children, so they need to you know, pay for the, let's say, caretaker. Uh, and there is also transportation involved. But definitely what I like about uh, this <coughs> compensation, this fee for participants, is uh, the mayor, the city hall says, uh, through this, we value your work. So this is important. And uh, there is also one more uh, aspect that uh, it uh, encourages people with low income to participate. So the, the composition of the whole group uh, could be different uh, if there was no fee. So uh, whether the fee is present or is not present, it does have an influence on the final uh, composition of the group. But people with the higher education would to dominate the, the group, which is not bad, but it's not representative. So our aim is descriptive representation or demographic representation. Okay, so uh, for the first random selection, actually we use the, the software from Ireland, and uh, we, have, we have prepared our own program, and we, we, we take the, 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 the database, which is the voters registered, we upload it, and uh, our software connects with this, uh, with this website, random.org, and they send us the numbers. So we don't send out any for personal information, we just send out that in this uh, category, uh, demographic category, we have, let's say, 58 people, and we would like to uh, select, uh, let's say, 40 of them. Please give us a random number. That, that's, the, like, uh, that's what the software, software does. And we use this website uh, because uh, they are, um, focus on true randomness. What does it mean? Any computer in the world, even the best you know, NASA computers, uh, cannot do anything at random. They need an algorithm. They need to be programmed. So um, you need something physical. So, um, and what they use is the noise of the atmosphere. They get the radio receivers, and they catch the noise of the atmosphere, which is random. They translate it through the algorithm to some numbers, and that's how the, the random selection is done. Uh, this is the first radio receiver that they use. It is very important that it is old uh, because it didn't have the noise filter uh, because they wanted the noise. So I like this part uh, for, for me. It's, uh, it's a lot of fun with uh, random selection. And the second part, when people register, there is a special website where people, people can call by phone. When they register, there is a second part of random selection. And in Poland, we do it by tossing the dice. And it is transmitted live on the internet. And we have also the special software. For example, uh, there are five, uh, five people here. We don't know the names. There are special identification codes here. Uh, these are the, uh, the, the categories uh, which are <coughs> uploaded upload currently in this the latest version that I just uploaded. And you know that the, in the category of um, uh, women, age group 18 to 24, <coughs> uh, district Oliva, education level middle, uh, there are five women. So we have uh, five people, you toss the dice, and you know that it's number three. And if someone is watching, so uh, she would know that this code is her because she, she received it uh, in her mail. So this is like completely transparent. Uh, this is the TV studio in Gdansk. Uh, it's, it's on the random selection. Uh, the dice is here. There is a ball. There is a camera. There are several cameras. This is really, really like professional stuff. <laughs> and. So the, some of the key features, which uh, we, uh, they really work well in ICE. So definitely we, we emphasize this, this part of creating a good atmosphere. There is a part where people uh, are like, uh, there is no like um, uh, discussion on the topic. It, it's just about people meeting each other, having a good time. So, to, so that they feel comfortable with the whole group. And it really works because uh, 
I remember one person who uh, was kind of a shy man actually, and he said, you know, um, when we were talking about this uh, flood prevention, uh, the, he went to the forest to see uh, on his own the, the, one of the streams, because there was a talk uh, about the rainfall going down the, down the forest, and he walked up the whole stream making photos just to, to, to see on his own what he will make a decision about. So, and, and we said, oh, you, you, should, talk, you should tell uh, about this uh, to the whole group. And he said, no, no, I'm finished. I, I don't want to do it. So, oh, okay, but eventually, uh, since it was uh, the last, I think, one of the last uh, meetings, he decided on his own to stand up and to talk about it to the whole group because he felt comfortable with, with everyone. So, and this is very important. So it's not like the parliament where people are fighting. No, no, it doesn't, it doesn't work like this uh, at all. So in Ignaisk, we use the uh, group of four people. Uh, you can also see the, the photos uh, from the citizens' assemblies around the world where they are sitting around tables with seven or nine people, which is fine as well. There is, if the group is uh, of uh, like seven people, then you need a table facilitator. And since we, we follow the format of World Cafe, which means only four people, we did it because we didn't have the table. So it's a practical, uh, practical reason. <laughs> but it works really well, and our costs uh, are down because we don't need table facilitators because there are no tables. And, uh, and the group is just four people. So, and, and that people rotate very often. You can see the, uh, that on those papers here and there, uh, there are numbers of groups and people change. So uh, these are also the, the rules uh, for, uh, for the, um, how people relate to each other and they are accepted by the whole group. And uh, this is uh, respect, oh, we, listen, we listen to each other, we don't interrupt each other. We, we speak in a plain language. We are open for asking questions, for listening. We try to keep up to the point. We try to be present. And we take care of ourselves. And our phones are off. <laughs> so, and this is one of our uh, facilitators. Actually, she's a, um, what's the word for it? Not moderator, but. Um, like me, or mediators. She's a professional uh, mediator. It's very important to find the best facilitators uh, you can. We do use uh, three charts. I also uh, like them uh, very much. And it uh, really does matter who you invite as an expert, because since people are not experts themselves, they follow what they hear from others. And it is also important to have experts not just pre presenting just one side or one, or one set of options, it is important to have a whole spectrum of options for people to choose. So, and, and definitely, it, uh, each time, each time, we did four citizens SM in Poland, and each time there was not enough time. We think people could have talked longer. So, um, today, when I, I read about this, um, the, and, and in Poland, meetings start at 10 a.m. on Saturday, and they last till uh, 4 p.m., and people are tired because it is a lot of listening to our mm, to the new to the new ideas and also there are discussions in a small group it is interesting there is lunch yeah. and there is coffee but still it is a bit tiring uh, to, to spend the whole day like this and, and um, mm, for for me like the format is uh, for the air quality let's say it would be uh, one or uh, two or three days for education uh, by day, I mean Saturday. There are also breaks uh, between Saturdays, so not, not just Saturday, 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 but uh, I would suggest uh, some breaks in between, like a free Saturday. And uh, for deliberation, I would set aside three days just for deliberation. So, because this part of, okay, what are our values, what are our aims, what is the vision of our city, uh, developing this takes time. And then you get the proposals from the experts or from the from the group directly, and you go one by one to uh, to to look at them. What are the uh, advantages? What are the disadvantages? Is it legal? How much would it cost? If, if there is time, you can really go deeply into each recommendation to be sure that people really know what they will finally vote upon. 
And I remember uh, one of the city councillors from the city of Łódź, who's the uh, second biggest, I guess, uh, city in Poland, uh, she came to Gdańsk to see the, uh, to, to watch the, as observer uh, the city assembly. And she said that as a city councillor, I don't get this much information to make decisions as the citizens assembly. You know, plus, there is no real deliberation, plus, you have this party fighting against another party, so it's completely different. Right? So, this is the mayor of Gdańsk, Pawel uh, um, uh, opening, uh, I guess, the second citizen assembly. These are the two facilitators uh, in the middle. So, um, yeah, people, people do enjoy. Uh, uh, when the politician, like the top politician, comes to them, he greets them and he also says how important it is for him personally to, um, to have this process going on in the city. And the whole educational phase is uh, transmitted live on the internet. And this is my friend's at home. He connected his laptop to the computer and he was sitting on a couch with his wife and they were watching Citizen Assembly <coughs> when he was the parliament. So, and to sum up, what are the key ingredients for success? Uh, what, what is necessary to make it all uh, happen? So definitely the whole process, from the random selection, through the creation of this educational phase and so on, and the deliberation, which is like a key part of this whole thing, it needs to be well designed. You need skilled people to help you to create this process. And it is like a standard rule that uh, the city or the country invites independent coordinators. The rule that we use in Poland is that any, uh, uh, any member of the, of the team who is coordinating the citizen assembly cannot be the member of the public uh, administration. Why? Because uh, it's, again, it's again about independence. So it's like um, when, you, when you create this program, uh, you make some decisions, and if there was like a, someone from the city hall involved directly, then people see, oh, he's, uh, he's under the mayor. We, we are not sure uh, if we can trust that it was done um, uh, for us, because uh, maybe he was thinking about what is going for the city hall. And the city hall is a stakeholder. They come at the, usually they come at the beginning to present the background for the whole project. They then come to present their own solutions to the citizen assembly. Let's say on the topic of air quality, they, they could present like a list of things that we would like to go in this direction. Plus, they, they can comment on what our expert says. <coughs> Plus, they can also give information. Yeah. This recommendation is legal. This is not legal from our perspective. And they, give, they provide the cost for each recommendation. So, so people not just voting on idea, they know how, what is the cost and what is the budget of the whole city. Can we afford it? That, that's, the, that's the question. So, um, for coordinators and uh, for the mayor, it's, it's ideal. It's trusting uh, that people can make those wise decisions. It's, it's like a basic, basic thing. It's, it's the attitude of the facilitator, of the coordinators, uh, to, to believe in people. That, uh, that the final results can be can be good. This is like a f fundamental fundamental thing. Uh, th there is no point in uh, saving money on inviting experts. Uh, you need the best possible. We did have, uh, for example, uh, in the city of Lublin, uh, we had a. It was the topic was uh, the general topic was how to improve air quality, and we wanted to present the solutions with regards to uh, transportation. So, and I asked a friend of mine, who's a journalist, who is the best expert on, on bicycles? And, he sa and she said, uh, Oliver Schneider. And he lives in France. And he, we invited him from France, because we wanted to have someone who is the best. But that's, that's really the crucial, uh, the crucial part. So, um, and the whole process makes sense uh, from my perspective. When, when you have the willingness of the city hall, the mayor in, personally, who is the, the most... In, in Poland, the position of the mayor is very strong. He's the, the elected directly. The city council is important, but not as, as important as, as the mayor. So, uh, and, and we, mm, 
actually, what we say in Poland is that um, if the results are not binding for you, it, then don't do it at all. Because it will be just another public consultation and people may, may become like, um, they, they're not, not, uh, they will be not happy about it. Uh, what's the word for it? Like, this, not this. Hmm? Yes, disappointed. Disappointed. That, that, that's the one. So, so definitely, uh, what what is the fine? What is how do how would I define a success of a citizens assembly? The whole process went really well. The recommendations are fantastic, and the, they are implemented and they improve the well-being of people, the quality of life of people. Then everyone can say, oh, this process really makes sense. Life for me is easier. Oh, the quality of air, oh, it's fantastic. Yes, now now I can trust this, this whole process. But that's why we, when I meet with the mayor of a city who considers a citizen assembly, I always tell them about implementation of the results. Because people will judge them, not just by doing a process like here, right? They will judge them by the results. What did you, what did you do after that? So the mayor of which was like, oh, oh, oh okay, I, I get it, I get it. So we need a topic which will, uh, we will be able uh, to implement like quickly and which will be easy for us. So but the results will be quickly and we will be say, able to say this is a success. So they, they have chosen a topic of urban greenery. So it will be about planting trees along streets and so on. It's a nice topic, it's a pleasant topic. And they also uh, chosen it, uh, they have chosen it because it is easy for them to to make it happen and uh, to, to to implement the the results. And if you would like to uh, learn more about the citizen assemblies, uh, about the details of, of how we do it, there is a guide. Uh, it's available in uh, in six languages. And I'm looking for a marker. Yes. And one more thing would be that um, if you would like to organize the citizen assembly in Hungary, for example, or in Romania. We have a good partner here, which is the Sortition Foundation. Sortition, which is a like professional word for random selection. Sortition Foundation. Uh, and you have the Brett Henning sitting here, who is, um, you can contact him if you're, yes, this is Brett. And there's Mark also for the, and, um, uh, I think it's, it's, it's a good opportunity for you to have uh, people who are skilled in it, uh, who are prolific developers. So, uh, so thank you very much. Do you have questions at this point?